Welcome to the Simple Handmade Everyday Podcast. I'm Kristen, and this is where I talk about living a creative, intentional life. I like to chat about quilting, sometimes knitting, what I'm reading and watching, and a little bit about keeping a cozy, organized home. I've got my cup of tea in hand, so let's settle in for a chat. This is episode 69. Welcome. Welcome. It's great to be back. I know I've been a little bit irregular in my podcast lately, and I'm hoping that that crazy portion of my life is going to settle out here pretty soon. So let's settle in here with a nice cup of tea. I wanted to talk about the tea that I've got today. It is Plum Deluxe. I bought my daughter for her birthday a Plum Deluxe subscription. So, um, and I beefed up the first subscription um, with I think two or three extra bags of tea. And now for six months, she will get um, a bag of tea once a month. And it's very exciting, I gotta say. Um, So this is the one she got this month and it is called Fresh Squeeze Black Tea, a hug from spring to summer. And um, I've said this before that I don't really like heavily flavored teas, but these are just, you it, they come in a clear pouch so you can really see the tea. So you can see the tea leaves and there's orange peel. Like it's, it's very fresh ingredients. It's not um, any artificial ingredients. Um, and uh, so this has black tea, orange peel, apple pieces, carrot flakes. Wow, blackberry leaves eucalyptus leaves i didn't even know these things you could eat or drink hibiscus blossom lemongrass grapefruit essence so um it's a black tea so it's got caffeine but it is delightful i have to say so what is it that they say that may is the new december for parents (laughs) with kids in school and i really i think that is true so life continues to be full you know i broke the news on my last podcast that we had to um put my beloved Uh, cat tiger to sleep and a month later we found out that my dog is very ill we've had him teddy he's been in lots of my quilt pictures for i think 13 years he's he's 14 years old he's a small dog and um we went on a mother's day i walk i'm gonna call it a walk through a botanical garden and he did that with us he was just fine and then that night he wasn't right and the next day i took him to the vet and um there's a good chance he has liver cancer We're still waiting for the results. Um, There's been a lot of drama, a lot of tears, just so many feelings um, about this. We are still hopeful that, you know, it's not, there's still a chance it could pan out to be just fine. Um, And even if it's not, I don't think the end is absolutely eminent the way we thought it was a couple weeks. So that has been going on. So who knew that all of this stuff was gonna come down all at the same time. Um, my, uh, My two older kids, are um, moving out next Saturday, the end, you know, during Memorial Day weekend, they're sharing an apartment in um, San Diego. And um, neither one of them have lived in an apartment situation where they had to bring the furniture, you know, they could just kind of like show up or just even show up with a bed and that was it. (laughs) So we have been scrambling to outfit a small apartment. Um, And thank goodness for Facebook Marketplace and a Facebook group called Buy Nothing. So um, I was able to score a $2,500 custom-made sofa that looks, it is in fantastic shape for $50. <laughs> it was funny, so I saw it on Facebook Marketplace. My son and I were just going to check it out and then we we're gonna get, have to rent a truck from Home Depot to, to bring it home and the woman um, so first when we drive in it is a gated community with someone who's you don't even just enter a code there is a person at the gate to your name has to be there to be let in so i was like oh this this is score like these are the people we want their cast off furniture from (laughs) and it was so true this woman was just redecorating because that's what she wanted to do not because anything was worn out (laughs) and so when she found out that um you know, the kids needed more furniture than a couch. She's like, oh, well, I've got this chair. I've got this piece of art. I've got this lamp. I've got this end table. So we ended up really, um, they have a now a leather recliner that we got really inexpensively that I love. I'm just like, you know, if that doesn't fit, then we're bringing it back and I want that. And and so so that was, that was good. Um, Joan and I have made trips to Ikea for desks and lamps. Um, and um, I don't know how I found out, but there's a... a uh, group called I think there's one probably for every community but it's buy nothing more park which is just a free thing and um we 
stumbled across <laughs> the perfect time people who's who make the um the people that we got the couch from they make them look you know like not as um upper class <laughs> I and mean, this was like the hugest house i've ever been to and they were just giving away a practically brand new queen size bed that was just in their guest room so that saved us like i don't know 800 to a thousand dollars so we have done done really well i'm waiting to hear back on a tv stand today um, from facebook marketplace but so it's just been um it's been kind of interesting to to be able to piece this together and and all the things that when somebody is just moving into an apartment you know i mean they will they just they have kitchen stuff um like dishes and stuff but everything else is just they have nothing <laughs> <laughs> so that has been, um, you know, it's been fun. It's been stressful. Um, and just, you know, keeping me really busy and them, you know, who there's Joan is going through his last few weeks of school. Chloe's working full time. So it's just been a lot. Um, and then in the midst of all of this, my high school senior um, went to prom. Graduation is looming. Um I think last time we talked, I, we had just done photos. I dragged my feet on decisions about photos so long. My goal by the end of today is to have his graduation announcements ordered and um, have his graduation gift ordered. So it's just like all coming down. And then on top of all of that, my dad, my 80-year-old dad came to visit. We haven't seen him for almost two years. He um, lives in a different state and lives alone and was really on lockdown for all of COVID by himself, which was really hard. We talked on the phone a lot. We did a Zoom birthday party, you know, kind of a thing. But um, it was so great to see him in person. So he's making the rounds. I'm 80 years old, pulling a big fifth wheel trailer all over the Pacific Northwest in California, making the rounds, visiting his kids. So um, he just left this morning. So um, yeah, so just life is life is full, but. Um, you know, and, and just in good ways, you know, kids getting out into the world, things starting to, you know, they actually got to have a prom. Um, we ate in a restaurant inside, um, which is the first in forever. So just, you know, I'm excited about um, all the things that are happening, but it, if it is a little discombobulating um, to be really busy again, if you know what I mean, being out of the house and being busy. So, um, but you know, no complaints. Thank you to Fat Quarter Shop for sponsoring the podcast. Fat Quarter Shop is a one-stop show for quilting fabrics and supplies for quilters around the world. They stock quilt shop quality fabrics, pre-cuts, quilt kits, patterns, notions, and even cross-stitch supplies. Join Fat Quarter Shop for their 14th annual Designer Mystery Block of the Month Club. This quilt will leave you with a sugar rush with 12 sampler blocks by designers from Moda Fabrics to sweeten the deal. Each block finishes at 12 inches square and features the Strawberries and Rhubarb Fabric Collection by Fig Tree Quilts from Moda Fabrics. This club is perfect for beginners to experienced quilters. It runs from June 2021 to May 2022 and ships around the 10th of every month. That's coming up soon, so def you're definitely going to want to sign up for that. I'll put a link in the show notes. All right, let's move on to some quilt talk. Honestly, I've been talking about this for a while, but I am totally in a quilting funk. As a matter of fact, I've been reading in my spare time to just sort of battle the, I don't know, malaise and anxiety that's just kind of coming with the way life is right now. Um, but I did finish the binding on um, the modern quilt. I will take a picture of that. Oh, I'm not sure gonna, I'm going to have a picture for the show notes this time, but if you follow me, you'll see the picture because um, I want to get a picture of my son with that quilt because that's the quilt that I'm giving him to as he um, moves back down to San Diego. Um, but I am excited about one thing with my two older kids moving out as much as it has been a blessing to get this unexpected extra year with them at home. I, um, I'm going to reclaim some sewing space and that is part of my funk. I, I got over it earlier in the pandemic, um, of dragging my sewing machine out and putting it away at, you know, at my normal desk space. But once the handpiece quilt along started, I, I don't think I've really dragged it out except for maybe to make masks. So I'm ready to do that. And so now I'm faced with some decisions that I'm kind of excited about. So I've mentioned before on this podcast that my sewing space is in our dining room. So when you walk into my house, um, there's just a, very, a small entry and to the right is the living room. And then um, next to that is the dining room. It's, you know, one big room with, you know, cathedral ceilings. 
and we have always been one to like use every square inch of this house. So the the living room is not a formal living room. It's it's my office. Um, it's got nice wood furniture, big book you know uh, bookshelves, and it's so it's not you know like super utilitarian. It's a, it's a nice space, but it does have my computer and everything. And then the dining room, I just was had completely decked out as a sewing room on a dining room table, um, so that you know for twice a year, Christmas and Thanksgiving, um, we could turn it back into a dining room. But um, my sewing machine, cutting mat, um, I had little quilts on the wall. I had all my um, my notions and things that I, you know, threads and things at this little table right next to it. I mean, it was just, it was my sewing room. Um, not spectacular in any way. And it, I never loved the fact that when you walked in, to the house that is really the first thing you see is just the sewing space so I, I never loved that but I was like you know what this is what we've got and it's um it would be silly to to not use this space and my family had no problem with it but now um my daughter um is leaving her her bedroom and um you know at, at this point you know she is out on her own right she's got a full-time job and she's paying her own pay her own rent and all that stuff so as long as I keep a um, a bed in there, so I have a um, a white iron day bed that I got from my high school graduation that has been her bed her whole life till she went away to school and we got her a like a full size bed. Um, so I'll, I'll keep that bed that's going to go back into that room after she moves out. I don't even know exactly what furniture she's going to take. She's going to take a desk and maybe a bookshelf. But I was thinking maybe I could turn this bedroom into a sewing space. Um, in a place where you know so I could close the door on it and there's part of me that is just not sure if not not sure if that's the right thing to do I think I'm gonna try it um, I will have to buy some sort of a desk to put a sewing machine on but she right now has her desk nestled right in front of the window um, which I had never had it set up like that when I was in control of how that room was arranged she arranged it very differently but she put her she puts her desk right there and it's it's actually very lovely and you you know you can look out and it's, it's so, so I'm thinking that would be a great place for a sewing machine it's currently painted like a very pretty blue and I do kind of wonder about if that would influence how colors look in that room so um so anyways I'm thinking I'm thinking about that and that's kind of exciting and then just turn our dining room back into a dining room um I don't know. So that those kind of plans are, are kind of exciting to me. And I do, I have a book from CNT about planning your sewing space. So I might just dig that out and, and really, you know, kind of figure that out. So, um, so that's kind of what's going on sewing wise, but I do have a super fun quilt planner to talk about. So this is called the plan to quilt planner. And it is from Shannon at Eva B Makery. And I am so excited about this. I've got a few products that I want to talk about today that um, I'm going to kind of give you an introduction to. And then I'm going to circle back in a few weeks or months or whatever um, when I'm really using them consistently to, to talk about them again. Because um, I still, I have cracked this open and looked through it many times, but I haven't transferred my, my uh, quilting to-dos into this yet. Okay, so the cover of this says, Plan to Quilt, the ultimate calendar-free project-based organizer. And calendar-free is very crucial to me here because um, I don't use a paper planner anymore. I, I've kind of changed um, now that I use the Sunday basket system. I don't use a paper planner. I, I kind of get everything down on one piece of paper, put it on the calendar, and just use index cards for my to-dos. So I do not want my quilt planner necessarily. It might work for some people, but I don't personally um, want my calendar and planner integrated with my quilt planner okay because my quilting projects I think we have established can stretch over many months and possibly years <laughs> so this is a very nice hardcover um, I'm gonna call it spiral bound but I think these might be called coils um, but it opens flat and I love that it's very nice quality so I want to kind of walk you through it and um, I will take some pictures and um, put them in the show notes so first of all, this starts out with a project checklist and, um, and it's color coordinated. She's got little colored dots um, besides each um, project. And then those colored dots coordinate with the, the project planners, the, the, how do I want to say it? The 
projects that are affiliated with that. Whatever, like if you write on the blue dot a certain quilt, you go to the blue section of the planner and then you know you fill out the details about the the quilt there so we've got a project checklist and um, she's got due dates priority stars and and the steps and i think this is so crucial if you're like me and you like to make lists and you like to check things off of lists this is great because she's got stash pull supplies cut piece press top finished batting quilted and bound so you know you get a lot of satisfaction for for checking those off she also has a shopping list that is also color coordinated back to your projects and then so let's move over to and she's got i mean there's lots there's room for lots of projects i am not good at estimating things um here i'm going to stop this and i'm going to tell you how many projects you can put in here there is space for 42 projects so let's get into what is in the actual planner and how you keep track of your projects. Um, there you've got a, a spaces for the project or the pattern name, the designer, the size. Um, if it was, you know, pieced by you or quilted by somebody else, you can keep track of all that. The method, whether it's pieced or appliqued, you can put some um, swatches of a fabric in here, the type of thread that you're going to use. The the if you're using any sort of decorative stitching, you can keep track of numbers there. Um, there's a place to actually um, put an envelope to keep your pattern there, so that you can when you think, oh, I made that baby quilt. Um, for my niece, I want to make that again. You will have all the information in one place, including the pattern and maybe even a photo if you do that. So um, then there's um, some graph paper for block design. Um, here's one thing that I love is she's got in the corner here um, five hearts and you fill in the joy level. Like, did you enjoy making this so that you can remember if there's a particular pattern you love to make or one that you really never want to do again? Um, so yeah, so there's definitely places to sketch and play around with design ideas. There's places for notes. There's a place to write the quilt story so that you can remember. So in my last podcast, I talked about um, the book, The Sewing Machine, where somebody kept track of all of the projects that they did in a in a very minimal min minimalist way um, for the sewing machine. And I was thinking that seemed really fun. Well, this is better because this, you know, and it could be as much or as little as you want, but you can tell the story of why you made this quilt. This was for my son when he went off to college and he was, you know, living here in this dorm or, you know, or whatever. Or you can put a photograph there, but just it's a really great way to to keep the history of a full project um, and not know and, and know that you're it's not going to become less useful um, when the year runs out. So this is called, again, the Plan to Quilt Planner. Um, and it's by Shannon Gilman Orr from EvaBMakery.com. And I will absolutely um, put a link in the show notes. And the other book on creativity I wanted to talk about um, was a book that was sent to me called Dare to Create, 35 Challenges to Boost Your Creative Practice by Marie Boudon. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, this is a book not about quilting, but about creativity in general. And um, this uh, woman's uh, creative outlet of choice is actually watercolor, which I am developing an interest in um, mostly because I think playing with watercolors would really be a fun way to easily play with color and learn more about color theory and um, color combinations that I like, things like that. So um, I, I see some watercolors in my future. But you don't have to be into watercolors to enjoy this book. So this is all about um, sort of her creative journey of um, reconnecting with something that her her artistic, you know, pursuit of choice, which is watercolor. But um, I want to talk a little bit about, like, let me just tell you the chapter name. So it is, it's got 35 challenges in the book, which can very easily um, be translated over to quilting. So um, her, the first section is called accepting yourself and that's giving yourself permission to create, finding time, building your, your confidence in, in your creative pursuit, um, creating a space to, to do your, your creative pursuit, finding inspiration, things like uh, building an idea box, developing your curiosity, um, 
it, you know, there's a part of it just, you know, of walking around, taking photos, storing those in a way that you can um, access them again. I am one of those people that take photos of things that I remember and then I just never go back and look at them. So that is part of the process is, is um, finding inspiration and then going back and using it in a way to, to be inspired by um, texture, design, color, things like that. Um, how to develop your practice. Um, you know, the idea of, of copying somebody um, versus influence. So in quilting, a lot of times we do use patterns, but um, sometimes, you know, I, I think it for people like me, it's good to take a, a pattern and then use that as a jumping off point to do, to do your own thing. Um, to experiment, you know, I've talked a lot about um, wanting to kind of get into more modern or improv styles of quilting and, and taking um, taking risks experimentally, um, taking breaks from things to, to let ideas sort of marinate and mature and through this whole process, discovering your own style. Um, so I am definitely, this is one of those books that um, I've got and I've um, read the beginning and I've you know, definitely flipped through this. I, this is the perfect book to flip through in my swing chair outside in the beautiful weather with a glass of wine or iced tea. But I want to report back to you as I start to work through these challenges and talk about how maybe they work with um, watercolors and how they work with um, with quilts. So, and same thing with the plan to quilt. I'm going to sit down when I, we get these kids moved out <laughs> and I'm going to go through all my whips and I'm going to um, fill, thing, fill that plan to quilt out and start checking things off and hold myself accountable. And I'm hoping this is going to help me get beyond my, my creative block. So I've got lots of things to help me move past this funk, which is, I think, what I need. So again, this is Dare to Create, um, 35 Challenges to Boost Your Creative Practice. And I'm, I'm going to put a link in the show notes. And um, they gave me a, a photograph and some interior shots of the book, too, so you can kind of see how it's laid out. It's beautiful because uh, she's into watercolors. The, the design of the book has a lot of watercolors in it, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So I will check back with you when I dive into this a little bit more. Believe it or not, I have a tiny little knitting segment <laughs> for this podcast, which I haven't had for a long time. And what it is, is um, I will talk about this book that I'm reading, these books that I'm reading these little knitting cozy mysteries. Um, which has just been like the perfect uh, easy read for me right now. Um, but in that book, which I'll talk about in a little bit, um, she owns a knit shop and these charity knitters come in and it's just she, the writer, the author brings up the types of charity knitting that they're doing. And one of them <laughs> was that they were knitting what are called knitted knockers. And they are um, prosthetic breasts for breast cancer patients. And I am... Um, I had a double mastectomy when I was 36 years old. Um, breast cancer runs in my family. And um, I have I had reconstructive surgery, but I didn't have it right away. And um, so I know what it's like to use a um, silicone, I guess probably they are, synthetic, you know, um, prosthetic. And they do not feel great right next to your skin. They get really sweaty. They're heavy. Um, they... <laughs> Unless you have the right kind of bra, they will fall out when you bend over, things like that. So somebody created a pattern to knit a prosthetic breast. And I was like, you know what? That is like the perfect thing to get me out of this knitting slump is just to do something for charity. So I will put a link in the show notes. And I downloaded the pattern and I watched some YouTube videos. Um, they're very specific about the types of yarn to use because they're right up against the skin. Um, and I guess you can um, knit any kind of, you know, sort of skin tone color, but also crazy ones. Sometimes people want purple ones in all different sizes they want. So I downloaded the pattern. I got on Knit Picks. Um, I ordered some, the, the yarn that they recommend, this very soft cotton yarn and um, some double pointed needles. I'm usually, when I do socks, I've switched over to the magic loop method, but I definitely know how to use double pointed needles. I bought the right size because 
seems like whenever I want to start a knitting project, I never have the right size needles. So I made this order from Knit Picks. And of course, since I was on there, I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm paying shipping. So I bought some sock yarn. <laughs> I bought some dishcloth yarn, you know, all that kind of stuff that one thing leads to another. And um, I sat down to knit these. And I have to say that I'm a little frustrated. They're hard to get started. And what's funny is they have rewritten the pattern so that it's less hard to get started. Um, but I'm a little out of practice using double pointed needles and I've started and ripped it out a couple times, but I will figure this out. But in case any of you are um, a more accomplished knitter than me, which that would not be hard, um, I'm going to put a link in the show notes to what I think is this pretty cool worthy cause um, called uh, Knitted Knockers. All right, let's move on to books. So as I said before, I don't even know how I stumbled across some little cozy, crafty mystery. Um, and the series is, I don't know, what is the series called? The, the quilt shop name is called Notorious. The, the author is Regan Davis, which apparently is um, a nom de plume. And she's actually a quilt, uh, not a quilt, a knitwear designer. And I think I know who she is because a lot of times at the end of the book, um, I always get them on Kindle. There is a link to a pattern that they talk about, you know, some sort of a, a cardigan pattern or socks or whatever. Um, but the first one is called Knit One Murder Two by Regan Davis. And um, the first couple maybe were free uh, through the um, Kindle, you know, prime reading kind of situation. Um, but since then, I've just bought them. They're like $2.99. And then, I, so I... I bought the second and third one. I think she's, there's about nine of them. And then you could buy four through six for $4.99. And as I said before, this is not great literature, but they are super cute little cozy mysteries. And I love these crafty mysteries because then, yeah, it just sort of reawakens this, this um, love of whatever craft they're doing. Like, you know, I love, it, it takes place a lot of it in a quilt shop, but you know, so she's sitting down and working on a sock here and a sweater there, and it just makes me want to go knit. So those are, those are really fun. So those are my nighttime read until, um, my, my eyes are, you know, falling until I'm falling asleep, even though it's not optimal to be reading a, an ebook at that time, I know, but I do read on my Kindle, which I think is a little, the light situation is better than my iPad. Um, but the actual paper book I'm reading right now, let me grab it here, um, was recommended by a reader, Catherine. So thank you very much. She sent me her, um, a recommendation for her favorite book, which is called The Emperor of Ocean Park by Stephen L. Carter. And um, I am just a little ways in, but I can already tell that I am going to love it. I will tell you more about it as I get into it, but basically it's a, um, there's a murder mystery in it and, um, it addresses something that I never thought about. The, uh, uh, person who has died was a judge and he had a failed Supreme court nomination. And that's one thing I've never really thought about is somebody who goes through any kind of a, you know, a congressional confirmation hearing and you know, all these things come out about them. You never really think about what the rest of their life was like to have all that public humiliation out there, you know? So um, that's one of the things that this book addresses, um, but I'm loving it so, so far. And um, thank you, Catherine, for recommending it. And thank you to everyone who sends me um, book recommendations. My Goodreads <laughs> list is growing every day, but keep them coming, I love it. From a TV movie standpoint, I don't have much to talk about because, frankly, if I'm not sewing, <laughs> then I'm not watching as much TV. Like, I, you know, I have the, those things on while I sew, um, so I've been doing more reading. But um, I'm still totally obsessed with the Broken Wood Mysteries on Acorn. As a matter of fact, when my dad was here, we share a love for um, those little mystery shows, um, like Midsummer Murders and Foils War and things like that. So I uh, may have gotten him hooked on the Broken Wood Mysteries, which is like Midsummer Murders, only it's in New Zealand, which is super fun. Um, so I've been watching those. There's many seasons, so it's going to take me a while to get through those. We also just um, got HBO Max for a month. Do you guys do this? We are completely a streaming household at this point. You know, we don't have cable or anything. Um, but there were some things that we wanted to see on HBO before the kids left. And 
One of those things was the Studio Ghibli movies. These are were big parts of my kids' childhood. I don't know if you know about those. Those are just like My Friend Totoro, um, Howl's Moving Castle, Ponyo. They're these um, Japanese animated um, movies that are dubbed in English, and they always have this these crazy all star casts with Matt Damon and Tina Fey and Betty White. <laughs> You know, it's crazy. So we're kind of knocking those off as a family, which is really fun. And also just reliving some of their other childhood favorite um, shows like the Looney Tunes show and, and things like that. One movie that I really want to knock out while we have HBO is Ford versus Ferrari, which um, I've been told I will love, even though it's a movie about cars, <laughs> probably because it has Matt Damon and Channing Tatum in it. Is that not even sure about that second person. Um, so anyway, so we're going to plan to watch that too. But um, yeah, not much to report there. The other thing that has been taking up a lot of time um, because it's spring is gardening and just spending as much time outdoors as possible. So a few episodes back, I talked about this project that I have to cover up this um, concrete wall that we have in our yard. I have successfully covered them with vines everywhere. There's there are planters, but there's part that is um, just on our patio as this as the wall between us and our neighbors extends. And there's just it's just right where we eat outside, and it's just this ugly wall. So I had a friend of mine um, who's a woodworker build me two beautiful planters planters um, with a uh, a plan that I bought from Gardenary which is an online kitchen garden. She's, it's, a, it's a woman who has a whole business about um, convincing you you need kitchen gardens. <laughs> so I use her plan because it's very pretty. It's got trim pieces. We figured out how to put a bottom in it because the way she does hers is just, it sits on the ground because they're just really for raised beds. But so these are like 48 inches long and about 16 or 18 inches high, 18 inches deep. And I got two of them to just um, put that's up against this concrete wall separated by a whiskey barrel which I actually think it said whiskey barrel when I bought it from Home Depot but I think it was a wine barrel because it's all purple inside and it smells really good Um, so that takes up I don't know a good 10 feet of this of this wall that I want to cover up it's been the slowest project ever Um, I asked for those planters for my birthday in March (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and um, we're still not done with this project, but now we have trellises that are up there. So my idea is in the planters, um, I'll grow some flowering vine up the trellises. That'll cover the wall. In the whiskey barrel, I want to put, uh, I think, a tangerine tree. Um, I'm hoping actually we're going to go buy the vines in the tree today. And then the rest of the planter, I'm just going to put some perennial flowers. I'm absolutely obsessed with dahlias right now. Um, I put some dahlias and delphiniums just in my garden beds um, and zinnias. These are all favorite flowers of mine. Um, Foxglove is another one that would look good there. And then I want some like lobelia and alyssum kind of spilling over the front edge and I think it's just going to soften that whole area so much Um, I think it won't we really won't get the full benefit benefit of it till I don't know August or maybe even next year till those vines really take off but I'm very excited about that project I got the vegetable garden in too every year I say I'm not going to do vegetables because they're not working out I'm giving it one last try here so I've divided our garden up um using the square foot garden method. I'm looking out the window at it right now. I've got some tomatoes and um, some sugar snap peas that are gonna vine and jalapenos. We love to pickle jalapenos, basil, parsley. And then in the center, I've gotten, I've got from seed, kale, lettuce, two kinds of lettuce plus some mescaline um, which is looking really good. And all the lettuce and the mescaline, it's all cut and come again. So I can just go out there and trim it and it'll just keep growing back. And I've done some radishes mostly. I mean, I do like radishes, but they just, you know, it's going to give you the return the quickest. Some radishes and carrots, which I planted very badly and are very clumped up. I'm going to have to do some thinning there. So, um, so yeah, so the garden's in, the planter project's almost done. 
Um, and then it'll just be weeding and mulching and weeding and mulching all summer long. But I'm, uh, I'm very excited. Actually, as we're talking, I can see my husband walking towards the garden with a weeding bucket, which makes me very excited that I will not have to weed today. Oh, and that whole back wall in that garden is blackberries. Um, so that's, um, yeah, so that's going to be fun. I, I think it'll be fun to put something like a tangerine tree in the, in the yard. I, I want to have some more, um, edibles in in the yard not just flowers but also edibles all right i'm going to wrap up with um just a couple more things and some some coming soons so one of the things that i did and i don't know if i talked about this this in my last podcast but um i made binders for my kids who are moving out so i've talked a lot about the sunday basket and how much i love organized 365 and she is all about using binders instead of file cabinets because they um because they're more of a finite size they force you to go through things and and get rid of things that you don't really need to be storing um, and they're more portable and in case of an emergency or something like that then you can grab them and go um, one thing that I think is true for um, kids you know or young adults as they're as they're moving out is they're used to growing up in a very digital age and um, Organize 365 is a lot about organizing paper. And I remember when I started getting into that system, I was like, I don't really have that much paper, but you know, everybody's got some paper. And I know for my kids, when they get random pieces of paper, um, a bank statement, an exclamation of benefits, the uh, insurance information about their phone, yeah, some of this you can just, you can, you can get online, but they never know what to do with those pieces of paper. And so I created a binder for them, for each of them. I'm gonna reach over here and grab it right now. Um, that has these sections that have dividers that have pockets. So they don't even have to put anything, uh, they don't have to three hole punch things. They can just store them in the pockets. And I've got a section for house, finances, medical, personal, and stuff. <laughs> um, and for instance, so in the house, I mean, they might not need the house one because I know they signed the lease and I think they did it, did it all digitally, but I was thinking it might be a copy of the lease, things like that. Um, but um, for finances, this could be credit card statements, bank statements, anything that happens to come money related. Um, you know, my, my daughter started a, um, an IRA. Um, which is really exciting to do at such a young age. And sometimes there's just paperwork affiliated with that. So it's it's a place to keep it. So if you ever need it, what I'm hoping is when they take this binder is what they I will say is whenever you get random pieces of paper and you don't know what to do with them, just stick them in this binder. And then there's one place to look for them. Um, so there's a medical, personal, under personal, I've given them a copy of their birth certificate. I'll put Chloe's passport in there. And under stuff, I've got the information about the insurance on their phone. And I think instead of maybe house, I might change house to recipes. I have gone through my recipes and I've made copies of all of their favorite recipes so that when the time comes that they want to start making them, they have the recipes already. And they were they were different piles for each kid because they like very different things. And, and in some ways, I don't think they will be making them soon. But I think at some point in, in their lives, they will be glad to have those recipes. So... Um, so I've made those binders. I think they're about ready to go. Um, and we will, I will send those off with them. And I hope that they use them. Or I hope it's, it does become that one place um, that you can just put all your papers so that um, you're not looking, you're not creating piles on the counter or in drawers where you can never find it. You can just go, you know, if I, if I need that piece of paper, it's probably in the binder. And um, a couple of things I want to talk about coming up um, is from Organize 365, they sent me a financial binder, um, which I'm very excited about. And I haven't started filling that out yet <laughs> because time, but as soon as I do, I'm going to um, talk about that. And that's a place to keep all the information about your investments, your banking information, um, you know, your insurance, things like that. Anything that you might it gives you a place to go look for those things or also in case something happens to you um a place for people to go you know to find out where all your money is <laughs> that's my fear is that my kids do not know where all the, the the bank you know what where we have bank accounts where we have life insurance things like that so um i'm excited to kind of knock that off my list and feel good that that is is, is taken care of 
And um, the other thing you have to look forward to, I am looking forward to anyways, is I was sent a pottery kit from a place called a pottery with a purpose. And the idea is to put your phone down and do something creative um, with your hands. And so they have these little pottery kits and I'm going to make a little pinch pot, maybe a votive candle holder. I'm super excited about doing it. Um, but again, I just need to carve out a little bit of time. I'll put a link to the pottery with a purpose Instagram account because it's very inspiring. So, so those are some things that I'm really looking forward to digging into really using and then, um, giving you some more information on future podcasts. That's about it for this week. I hope to see you again in two weeks. Um, and until then you can find me online in my blog simple handmade every day on instagram at kristen esser and please consider joining the simple handmade every day private facebook group so that we can keep the conversation going have a great week